Hey there, so while I'm getting this started, my name is Rachel Brown and today I'm going to be showing you my um, educational websites analysis for Education 639 this semester. So the first thing that we need to first um, figure out is what exactly is educational technology? And according to Merriam-Webster, they define educational technology as digital technology used to facilitate learning. So for example, thinking of us as teachers, we're constantly using technology in our classrooms, but the question that we must answer is if our technology is actually helping our students or if it's harming our students. So the first website that I would like for us to view is Kahoot. And this one is, I know, one that's used all the time. Students use it, they love it, teachers use it, they love it. It just seems to be the go-to quiz sharing app, test review sharing app, and a fun app from there. So first, let's describe what is Kahoot for the people who may not know. So Common Sense Education refers to Kahoot as a student response tool that can be used for all ages and grades. So with Kahoot, students are doing fast-paced quiz type games um, that have anywhere from a 20 second answering period to a two to three minute answering period, for example, for math problems and things like that. This can be used live in the classroom. So like I'm teaching it to my students as they're playing it in front of me or it can be used as a self-paced game where the students are doing it on their own at their own computer and there's not really a lot of noise or things like that going on because it's all on their specific screen. And the other important thing to note that student accounts for this are free, which is a huge thing in education these days. So there are several pros and several cons to Kahoot. Some of the pros is that teachers can actually integrate slides and multiple choice questions, videos, true and false, and many, many different other items into their games for students to review. For students, it's an easy log on. They go to kahoot.it and they put in a seven digit code that could be numbers and letters or a combination of both. And then they are automatically into that specific game and they can't go into any other games as long as they put in the right code. The pros also, as I mentioned earlier, is that the accounts are free for students and that data is actually saved to the teacher account from each round and can be exported directly to Google Classroom Grades, which is cutting out a ton of time for teachers who are already tired and stressed this time of year. There are a couple cons to this, and one of the biggest ones that I did not realize till I actually started being a teacher is that the fast-paced environment of Kahoot can actually be really stressful for students with learning disabilities and learning challenges, and it may not be the best test review or quiz review for them. Um, the other con is that users can create user-created content, and this could be anything and everything, and it's not always kids creating it, so we need to be careful because that material is not always appropriate for students. <laughs> Also, the ways of viewing data for teachers can be hard over long-term progression. So I can see the students' grades from one specific quiz, but it's very hard to compare. For example, if we did five quizzes over five weeks of the same material, it was very hard for students to, it's very hard for us as teachers to see how students have improved. Excuse me. And here's a couple pictures of Kahoot. So this is what the teacher sees when they are creating the quiz. It's a multiple choice question. You select what answer is correct. And then you can also select a time limit for the quiz or for that specific question of how long they have to answer those questions. Here's what the students see. So they have a question. This teacher has added a picture. This 17 here is actually the timer that's counting down. So at this point they have 17 seconds left. And then all the buttons are big and bright and different colors for the students to see. And here's an example of user created content. Um, this is a teacher or actually this is Kahoot itself that has created five different Kahoots on ancient civilizations that teachers can go in and use for their students. The next one that we have, which I know is a student favorite is Prodigy. <laughs> Now, Prodigy is a fantasy-like game, according to Common Sense Education. Personally, I do not have much experience with games like that, so I am just using them for that. And But what I do know about this is that it uses math fact fluency and strategy for students. So the students can form groups with other students from their classroom to work together, and they work together to fight dragons. And how they fight those dragons is by answering math fact fluency questions. This is also free for most students and it automatically adjusts the difficulty level of the math facts based on the student's skill level. So you have, so if you have a student who's still working on basic addition, that student will be given basic addition math problems. If you have a student who's doing division and multiplication, it will give them division and multiplication problems. So it's really good to differentiate for all students. 
There are also several pros and cons of this. Um, several of the pros is that it's made to keep students' attention for long periods of time because the students just think they're playing a game. And when they think that they're playing a game in class, they get so excited. It also has a multiplayer mode that allows students to work together with their friends in their own classroom to fight the dragons together. And as previously mentioned, it adapts to students' skill levels and needs. Some of the cons though, is that it is just a standard set of textbook math problems without much variability. So if a student is stuck on one level for more than a small period of time, they're gonna get the same problems over and over again, which doesn't really help build that fact fluency. Another thing that can be kind of worrisome for a teacher or a parent is that with the multiplayer mood, they aren't always just playing with students in the class. They can also choose to play with random people, which poses a risk to internet safety and digital citizenship. Here's a couple pictures of Prodigy for you to see. So when the students first log in, they get to choose what room they want to build, and then they build that room. And how they build that room is when they fight the dragons, they earn coins that they can then use to purchase furniture and decorations and things like that. <laughs> Here's an example of the math problem that a student is solving. And here is an example of a little bit more of a difficult problem. And also when the words are highlighted in green, that means that there's a hint. So this student has clicked on this green word and it has given them this hint to help them solve the problem. And this is what the teacher views. The teacher can see students' progress, their comprehension, how much they've used it, and they can also assign certain topics to certain students. <laughs> The final one that we have that, that actually focuses on our digital citizenship is something called Digital Passport, and it's actually created by Common Sense Media themselves. So what is this? Digital Passport was created again by Common Sense Media, and it is a series of games and scenarios to help teach students about digital citizenship. This is made specifically for students in grades three through five and is free. And it has six different levels that students walk through, um, different topics such as cell phone safety, appropriate citations, what and what not to do, etc. There are several pros and cons of Digital Passport. Um, one of the biggest pros is that there's teacher materials and supplemental lessons such as videos that are provided for free to teachers to help create their lessons and uh, help teach them both the students can do it individually but then also as a class. And as previously mentioned, there's games, there's videos, there's readings, there's lots of different things to keep students' interest. One of the biggest cons is that there is a lot of reading and the words aren't always very easy for students to understand. So this may be a bit of a challenge for our students who are struggling learners. And finally, once students pass a level, so for example, if they pass a level on cell phone safety, they cannot go back and replay that level. And here are some of the games um, that students will play. So this one is about music copywriting. It's called Mix and Mash. Search Search, search Shark is about appropriate searches and what is a good search and what is not a good search. This one is about standing up to internet bullies. This is about what to share and what not to share on the internet. This one is about multitasking. So for example, um, when you are on a computer and a phone, how that may not be the best thing. And this one is about password security of what is a good password, how you should not share them with others and things like that. And here are my references. Thank you, have a good day.